Anyway, no matter. So I am back. Sackdoth isn't, because Sackdoth is tired. Had to go to bed. But yeah, I'm back. So we're going to be starting the game once, I guess, well, flip stuff's in. So we basically are not waiting for anything. We can just start. The map is Intersection version 3, and the, the record so far is 1 and 1. And yes, in case you're wondering, I'm actually not very tired right now. I passed the time by playing some Smash 4. And I actually was doing really well. Although, like, one guy who is just going in between all the current considered high-tier characters, like, going between Little Mac to Sonic to Captain Falcon, and it's like, he may got may get one game on me with any given character, and then I just figured him out right or figured them out right away. And then another guy was or another person was Rosalina and Luma, and that was a cool match. They had two really good matches out of that, which I just realized I forgot to say the replay of the last one. But I got two really good matches out of that one. Anyway, so now the game is actually on, or soon will be on. Then oh whoops I. Apparently didn't get in. What the heck? The game didn't start for me. Okay, so yeah, the game is currently just started. And now flips this back, so we are on intersection. So it will be just me for the remainder of the games. That's, I mean, like I said, Sackdoth. Flipstep had to go, sorry, not Flipstep. Floris had to go, and Sackdoth is in bed. Because Sackdoth had to sleep. Because it's late at night in Australia. Anyway, so Flipstep is going for Life Eagles, Norm for Air, and Black Dutchie and Skazi are mirroring that except with Cloaky instead of Light Vehicles. And why is the sound not on? Because I didn't put it on. That's better. Now we have sound. So yeah, Skazi for Cloaky. Skazi is going fairly aggressive. Gets getting a couple. Actually, no, never mind that aggressive. That's two glaives. Actually, six, six glaives? Wow. Okay, compared to three Scorchers, so two darts, three Scorchers, a kind of typical flip step start. Norm going for a pretty typical air start with the two Swifts followed by the Raven. Swifts scouting on everything, knows exactly what's going on, so Black Dutchie and Skazi are ahead in the information game. While flip step and Norm are just sort of hanging out. They don't know what's going on yet, but they will soon, and now they are even. Everyone knows exactly what everyone else knows. And also gets a free shot off in one of the Swifts, because why not? Nice boost there, by the way, getting away from the Swift. I don't think that Swift had reloaded. No, it hadn't reloaded yet, but still, that was a good that was a good one. And Skazi, on the other hand, just defending against Flipstip's darts, because that was the that was the thing to get rid of. I mean, the darts, kind of annoying. The Scorchers, however, those are actually not even gonna make a difference. Intersection, we saw this before. It isn't a map you can really assault. Assaulting the main base is what you do after after you've already dominated most of the map. You don't just assault the main base on intersection, particularly not in a 2v2, where there's two commanders in the main base. Incidentally, neither of which have been upgraded at this point. And that goes true for everyone, I think. Yeah, it looks like everybody has not been upgraded. And Flipstep is doing... Well, I think... Was that Flipstep last time? I can't remember who it was exactly. I I want to say it was Norm that did that on intersection, where they went forward. But Flipstep now going with the support comm, rather than a recon comm. Possibly a safer option, though... More importantly, they are building up. They're not extending that far. They're getting this expansion, and then they're just building up from there. They're consolidating in that area. So they are expanding a bit faster than Skazi and Black Dutchie are. And Skazi and Black Dutchie, on the other hand, are kind of taking air control. Black Dutchie being very keen on keeping air control. And the ground game's not going too badly either. And the gremlins are not going to help too much. The scouting can't easily get in here. I mean, they could be. I don't think it's going to happen. And the Scorchers are keeping their range. They're keeping their distance. The Glaives can't do much either. While Flipstep, on the other hand, is... Oh, sorry, I'm talking about Flipstep already. Yeah, Skazi, on the other hand, needs to defend. I mean, Black Dutchie could start picking away at these Scorchers right now. In fact, that's exactly what's going to happen. Black Dutchie is going to be starting to pick away at them, but not too heavily. However, as you can see, Norm taking the south, Flipstep kind of taking the southeast, and going to the center, not too quickly at a relatively reasonable pace. Now, Black Dutchie at this point having air control, not yet switching over to Raven. Okay, now switching over to Ravens, but only one Raven. While we see Thunderbirds coming out from Norm, which is an interesting choice, I don't totally understand the motivation for this. There aren't that many Glaives up. The Scorchers will be able to take care of them, no problem. There are no real heavy units coming in. 
unless they're planning on just disabling the entire main base and then trying to attack directly, that's the only thing that would make sense to me. If they're trying to do that, then... Wow, okay, they're really trying to end this quickly. If not, then I really don't know. I mean, it seems like it'd be okay. But yeah, it looks like it's probably just going to be a simple matter of having that Thunderbird available if they need it. I don't think they're going to use it directly. However, the Raven is likely to be used directly because why wouldn't you? I mean, go pick off metal extractors. Why not? Or actually, main base is pretty vulnerable. That would be a great thing to attack. I don't think that Black Duchy knows this, although they could send out a Swift just to find out. But if they did find out, that Raven could just go right in the back on the main base. Done. Or even right here. Even right in the south. No problem. But Skazi is... Well, actually, not worried about it. They're going for the commander directly instead. That's going to take a few shots to kill. But it is a recon comm, so it would only take about three shots. However, that Raven is going down in the process. But Norm being fished out. That was actually a really clever move by Black Duchy. Not sure if they intended to do the lure. But that was a good lure anyway. Keeping those... I mean, that Raven really isn't that powerful. That one Raven isn't going to do any damage except to a Metal Extractor. And a Metal Extractor is not that expensive. But sending in the entire Air Force and getting them all destroyed like that, that was a great play. The only thing I disagree with is the fact that it was kind of telegraphed. I mean, really, it's more to me than it was to Norm, but yeah, the, the rest of the forces were visible. Still, that was a good play. That was a good way of setting that up. On the other hand, flips to leapfrogging in the center, trying to take the center pretty hard. Now, I should point out the center doesn't actually have any particular material advantage. It is 1.6, just like everyone else. Or just like every other Metal Extractor spot. There's no particular reason to grab it, but there is a reason to get... Well, there's a reason to get it as just a Metal Extractor, because you always want Metal Extractors. The more Metal Extractors, better. Not sure I totally agree with that one, though. This one's a safer one to take. And then the corners are also good. Norm is taking the southwest corner. Great to see. No one's taking the northeast corner. I'm guessing Red Team is going to try to go for that, but Red Team is not expanding that quickly. Skazi's sort of expanding, but eh, the front. I mean, this is what some this is something that Flipstep did about two minutes ago. So Flipstep and Norm are just getting ahead economically. They're just faster economically. It's the only way I can really describe it. So Flipstep just keeping stuff at bay. There are crashes up. There's like some light light defenses up, but their main concern is expansion. Given that, Skazi and Black Duchy would be best served probably by just raiding this out. Now the defenders do make this difficult. But like I said, if they expanded out, that would actually work okay, because right now, Flipstep and Norm, while they are kind of expanding, they're expanding very defensively. So Skazi and Black Touch, you could expand a bit more nakedly, and that would work. Like, that's the thing. Right now, Skazi and Black Duchy, they're building a lot of units. They're kind of playing into the defensive expansion. They're playing into what it counters. It counters large numbers of units. But it doesn't counter naked expansion. And it looks like Skazi is actually starting to go for naked expansion. There is there is this one conjurer. It is going over to the northeast side of the map. It is doing some expansion. But, I mean, it's kind of tricky. I mean, when I say counters, I mean in very broad sense. Because it is totally possible for something to come up here and find that conjurer. And that naked expansion is over. Like, just one scorcher decides to go over to the northeast side of the map, finds that stuff, and done. Or this Phoenix comes up, because we're actually getting Phoenixes out of Norm. Why not? Skazi. Skazi's the one who has more money right now, not really pushing any money into Black Touchy's factory. So Black Touchy's air control could be undermined by Norm getting enough units, but right now Norm is not focused on that. Norm has a couple Hawks. Norm's Thunderbird is nowhere to be found. It appears to have been cancelled. Unless there's a wreck I don't see here, but I'm pretty sure it was cancelled. And down. Is that another. Yeah, it's the Swift. However, Raven's coming in here, trying to get rid of Flipstep's commander, but no, not even going for that. Going for the defender instead, getting distracted by the defender, which is really a wrong target. No kidding. That was perfect for the commander. A little overkill on the defenders there. Black Duchy misclicked. Rather unfortunately, that is going to give Flipstep and Norm an extra minute or so. That is, that is huge. And yeah, I, am, I should be streaming audio. Let me know if it's not. I don't really want to restart the stream right now, but hey, if I have to, that's fine. I will I will go ahead and do so. Anyway, Flipstep. Wow, really early artillery from Skazi. I, too, I totally understand where this is coming from, but the problem with artillery, which we discussed 
not in this game, but we discussed in earlier games, Sackdoth and Flores and I, the problem is you kind of need to have it behind defenses, either static defenses or just a heavy line of units. In this case, Gazi decided to have it front and center. This was a particularly good demonstration about why that is a bad idea. And this is pretty much opening up Flipstep to take out everything here. The Ravens are the only defense at this point, and they're doing a pretty good job. But, like I said, Flipstep and Norm are expanding. They're expanding pretty heavily. In fact, Flip Norm is going for a jump bot factory proxy in the corner, southwest corner of the map, while Skazi not really building much. And I should point out, Norm, with all this here, they've actually got quite a bit of overdrive. 1.1 minimum, so it's solar collector value all the time. Minimum. This is going very well for Flipstep and Norm. Skazi and Black Duchy are losing territory. The Naked Expand here, as soon as it's found out, which actually is really a matter of about 15 seconds. In 15 seconds, Flipstep and Norm will realize, oh, hey, this is open. Well, we'll just take it then. Because they're already going to take this. They're already going to kind of intercept with any potential reinforcements. Yeah, it's going to totally intercept. That'll set up there. The Glaives will be intercepted. The Ravens will intercept. will be a problem, actually. The Ravens are going to be a bit of a pain. The Crash is coming in to deal with that, but the Ravens... The Ravens do block out that attempted interception, and a nice little Lotus being made by Flipstep for Skazi. It's just... Just nice there. I mean, Skazi wasn't... Bo couldn't be bothered to make one of their own, so Flipstep decided to make one for them. Now, of course, Flipstep being on the opposite team, that's not going to help too much, but hey, charity is charity. Come on. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth and so forth. Actually, it looks like there might be a mild donation of Reclaim... Yes, that's exactly what's happening now. At this point, Flipstep is in fact donating metal to Skazi directly. Didn't quite get the Lotus up in time. It was one second away. Totally clutch, but that worked for Skazi. See, Skazi now realizes they need to defend this. However, Skazi also realizes, oh crap, my commander's dead. Yeah, because their commander died. Raven attack. No, not Raven attack. It's a Scorcher. Yeah, Scorcher dive. Their commander is very dead. And now these glaives are also actually not dead, but they're not in a good position. Napalm Bomber finishing them off, although admittedly... Wait, they're hurting the crash more than they hurt the glaives. That... That went well. That went wonderfully, I'm sure. However, it looks like, yeah, despite this, Skazi is actually naked expansion. They are, in fact, going for naked expansion. Not so much Black Duchy. Black Duchy going for a tank switch. And surprisingly, Skazi is not helping out. The Black Duchy is reclaiming... They're reclaiming from earlier attacks. But really, that's not a whole lot. If they want to push tanks, especially Reapers, you need like 20 some odd metal per second to push Reapers. Gonna get maybe one Reaper up in a decent amount of time. Like 25 seconds, yeah. That shouldn't be 25 seconds for a single Reaper. Like, Reapers are kind of tricky that way. You don't want... Like, one is okay, but not great. And the expansion being attacked, I mean, this isn't naked, but it's pretty darn close. Like, the Ravager is not going to be threatened. Nothing's really coming from behind. Yeah, this expansion is done. Skazi has no Northeast expansion. And without the Commander, they have their main base, which is, like, four. Like, main base and this over here. And this. Like, that's, that's about 7.5 metal. A little more than that. It's like 8 metal. Actually, it's exactly 8 metal. These are 1.6 each. Well, not counting Overdrive, but yeah, it's, it's about 8 metal. 8 to 10 metal. Skazi is going to barely hold on to this. And then, of course, it's up here. That's another problem. And from here, yeah, that's... Reaper is up. Thank you, Black Duchy, for all these random comments, because they actually make it a bit easier for me to cast. Kind of handy. I believe that's a widget that Black Duchy has, probably pointing out that there are certain units, certain useful units that have been made. And that's where the Thunderbird pays off. I'm not sure if that was there before. I don't recall really seeing it flying around, but definitely the thought of building it, that's where it pays off. Very nicely done, Flipstep. You can kind of tell that Flipstep's gotten, had some time to think while they were out shopping. I don't know what they were shopping for, but they had to go out shopping. That's why that was the hour break. Which, if you're watching on YouTube, you won't have noticed because I'll have cut it. Actually, I'll probably have split this into two parts at this, at that particular break. So you won't have noticed because it'll seem like an instant to you. But to the rest of us, to those of us who are here at the time, it was far, far longer. Incidentally, I actually won the Rosaluna, matches versus Rosaluma. That was, they were tough matches, but I did win them. Anyway. Flipstep is going to lose their commander pretty convincingly. There's, there is nothing coming back here. Flipstep's commander is is down, but Flipstep is still ahead economically. They still have more of the map. Like Flipstep and Norm have a lot more of the map. Norm hasn't even really made this jump up payoff. They're going for Scuttles. I haven't really seen it come up much. But against that, that would work nicely against the Reaper. 
And the Pyro's coming in as well for just an additional damage. Actually, the Pyro's alone would probably work pretty well against the Reaper. The Reaper can barely hit them, especially once they get jump going. The Zeus are the counter. Zeus is a direct counter, but the Reaper's not really. The Reapers will miss. The Reapers will get burned over time, but they will get burned. And where's that Scuttle? That Scuttle's over here. Now, how many Scuttles are there? Just the one. Okay. I often miss Scuttles. It's... I don't know what it is. They're just really hard to spot. But yeah, I have a tendency to miss Scuttles. So I just want to make sure I don't miss that one. And then from there, what do we have to deal with? Well, the Napalm Bomb's over to the northeast, getting rid of one more Metal Extractor from Skazi. So yeah, Flipstep and Norm just have taken the map. And now the big question is, who will take the center? That's the big thing. Will these Pyros also, will these Pyros move out of the way of this wreck? But yeah, who will take the center? Because the center here, just look at it. It's so full of stuff. Stuff everywhere. Because that's what the center is all about. The center is where the fights are happening, and that's where all the reclaim is. No workers there so far, though. No no M symbols. I mean, two of the commanders are dead. The ones that are really pushing the center are dead. Flipstep's commander... I'm sorry, Norm's commander's over here. Flipstep's commander's dead. Blackjack's commander's in the base. Skazi's commander's also dead. Not reclaimed. Neither reclaimed, actually. Flipstep's commander here. Skazi's commander here. And it looks like air control is going to remain in Black Touchy's hands. Norm trying to get it back. And Flipstep helping out with the Crashers. Trying to get rid of some of the Hawks. And actually, one of the Hawks does get a very nice position. Locks on the six, but even then, it's not enough. The Gremlin finishes it off. And then, really, just overwhelmed by numbers. So the air war continues to go basically in Black Touchy's favor. But at the same time, disarm. But at the same, same time, I think that there's Disarm available to Black Touchy as well. But there's definitely Disarm available to Norm. This needs to get reloaded, and now the Thunderbird has been reloaded. But these Zeuses are the prime target. Against these Zeuses... See, where's the Reaper, by the way? That Reaper is... not really to be found. It looks like it probably died, actually. Oh, no, never mind. It was a Red Reaper. That's what I was looking for a yellow one for some reason. Yeah, so the Reaper's still alive. Hasn't been repaired, though. That is not a good sign. That is a really bad sign. Now, the Thunderbird is over here. It probably is going to come in in about a couple seconds. It looks like it is going around, trying to scout out, figure out where to hit. Now, I should point out that Flipstep and Norm have pretty much full vision of what's going on, so it's not that big of a deal. And it looks like these Zeus's, yeah, they're not... They're not going to be countered too readily by those light ra overtime raiders. Like, damage overtime raiders, not going to do the trick. And the Thunderbird, unfortunately, misses getting one and only one Zeus. For ten seconds, but that's not what a Thunderbird's supposed to do. Rather unfortunate, and now the Reaper is being repaired. It's very nearly at full health, which is a bit of a big deal. And we're switching over to Dominatrix, we see from Flipstip. Flipstip getting the Reaper up. Sorry, the Ravager up, but more Reapers coming in from Black Touchy. I mean, Black Touchy at this point has two Reapers. And Flipstep and Norm aren't really escalating from this point. They have the Thunderbird. They have the Dominatrix, who's actually managed to get one of the Zeus's. That was a good... That was very well done. Got one of the Zeus's out completely. However, the Goliath trying to get rid of the captured Zeus before it deals any further damage. Probably not going to do too much. And these Pyros, however, are not in a good position. In terms of numbers, Pyros can outnumber Zeus and win that way, but that's about the only chance they have. And the Scuttle does go off and doesn't do anything. That was a Scuttle right there. Didn't hit anything. Bit of a shame. I think it was just built up for a while, but no, it didn't. It had no payoff. However, that Thunderbird finally gets a payoff. Finally, just to finally get those Zeus's. Buys a bit of time, and another Thunderbird wastes its ammo. Yeah, that, that was a bit of a waste. But still, it does keep some of those Zeus's done a bit or disarmed a bit longer. And then from there, it should be a simple matter of remembering to actually tell this channel that the stream's back up. But yeah. Probably should have mentioned that before the game started, but I got a little excited. Anyway, with Flipstep and Norm, it's looking a bit bit iffy. I mean, the Northeast, you have the Reapers coming, two Reapers and, Gal no, and a Banisher coming in. That's a lot for the defenses that have been built so far. And Skazi still has the Northeast corner. The Southwest is well secured, but the Northeast, not so much. Anyway, with Skazi, well, okay. 
One of the Reapers does get disarmed. We mentioned before, though, that Reapers kind of benefit by moving, but this is Retreating Reaper, so it doesn't really benefit all that much. And Black Touchy, having converted their air advantage into Raven some time ago, trying to take advantage of those Ravens, not really managing to do so all that much. I mean, Flipstip and Norm, they're still ahead economically. Flipstip more so than Norm, and Flipstip pushing a ton of metal into the Thunderbird. This is a mistake. Two Thunderbirds is enough. I realize I don't have air control, but they really need to either escalate or like escalate to Strider Hub or escalate to, to like heavy tank and then push a lot of Reapers themselves. Or just Or try to get air control. Like get a bunch of Hawks and Swifts and try to take air control. Because at this point, Skazi and Black Touchy have basically just whittled down Flipstep and Norm. And I think this will end up going to be a Skazi Black Touchy win twice in a row. But it's not. Or it's a little bit close to call. There is still quite a chance. I mean, this Dominatrix is still a bit of a thing. And of course, the Thunderbird, that's still causing disarm. I mean, the disarm doesn't really make a difference to the Dominatrix, but the Thunderbird's causing the disarm. And, a, I mean, that's the thing. This disarming the Zeus is a big deal. Losing another Zeus, but that's basically a free Zeus. The Dominatrix takes that out. It's kind of how the Dominatrix works, is that you take a unit, and your opponent goes to kill the unit they used to own. And if you're lucky, that unit won't actually get killed, and you'll have a free unit. Otherwise, well, they killed one of your their own units for you. And Dominatrix trying to get rid of these Reapers. This is a really tough thing to do. Trying to dummy a Reaper is pretty much impossible, but... Nice disarm! Okay, I don't know if that was intended or not, because it looks like the Dominatrix is not really trying. No, it wasn't intended. I was about to say, that looked like it was nice, because the Reaper getting targeted was not disarmed, but that was not intentional. That was very clearly not intentional. However, that forces the Reapers back, which is really surprising, because, like I mentioned before, Reapers should move forward. That's their advantage. But it looks like, because of Black Dutchie's response, Flipstep and Norm are going to be able to get some ground, get some time in. If they get in Reclaim, and they do have some Reclaim going on, they have some Masons up front. Flipstep has a Mason up front. And Norm doesn't have any Freakers up front, as far as I can tell. It's like one back here, not doing too well. But yeah, because of the fact that Black Dutchie and Skazi are being pushed back by the Disarm, it's their own response. Apparently, it's not necessary. Like, Skazi, or Sacktoth is pointing out, that's really not necessary. But that response, that specific response, that is what's giving Flipstep and Norm a really good shot right now. And they're having a really good chance of getting through this because they, they basically just Disarm and they get another free minute. And there's another Disarm, though it misses the Reapers this time, but it hits the Zeuses. And sacrifices the Thunderbird in the process. Well, I mean, there wasn't a bad reason why Thunderbirds were being built. I just thought, still, more than two or three at a time is probably a little excessive. Just given the other options available, and the fact that the Ground Army is still a weak thing, and there still needs to be a rebuild of everything that's been set up in the Northeast Corner. Regardless, it's still going quite well for Blue Team, but Skazi is catching up. Black Touchy as well is trying to catch up, and one more Zeus goes over to the blue side. Gets killed in the process, but still. Dominatrix doing a pretty decent job. They have, as much as can be said, almost made cost. I think I think they've had one each, maybe. And another stun out on all of the Reapers. Though that Thunderbird's gonna go down in the process. Getting killed by the Banisher. And Okay, this is it. Sides coming in along the southeast side into Flipstep's base. Nothing to defend against this. I think they yeah, had disarming their own base just to stop the size. A bit of a desperation move there, but totally understandable. However, the sides are killing that factory. That light vehicle factory is basically dead. The other factories are probably also dead, and. Oh, all Dommies were killed. I missed that. Then that's death. Yeah, Skazi and Black Touchy just managing to hold up long enough get that Reaper Ball going, and completely dominate as a result. There's that Reaper Ball. And we saw before that counter to Reaper Ball is to escalate. Go to Striders, go to Ultimatum, go to, especially this many Reapers, Ultimatum will work fine. Go to, possibly even, no, Dante probably wouldn't work, but Ultimatum's a good choice. The Thunderbird is a good choice, it's just that it needs follow-up. And there wasn't much follow-up. And even then, it's an okay choice, we mentioned before, it's an okay choice. It's really hard to stop Reapers without simply killing them. But yeah, that's the thing. There wasn't really much follow-up. And despite the economic advantage early on, and despite the fact that they were going for defensive expansion, and could have, and did to an extent, get rid of Skazi's blind naked expand, 
Not much more needs to be said about that. There's not much to do. It looks like there's still... I mean, the fusion reactor's gone. Skazi... Skazi and Black Touchy still have their scythe up. Or Skazi still has scythe up. That was... I mean, Skazi had Cloakie from the start. So that's always been an option. And Sniper coming in as well. Like, that's actually a good choice against the Reaper. That's one. Like, any anti-heavy unit. Sniper will work well. Scuttle works well. Sort of. I mean, it's not instant hit by the Reapers. That works fine. And... Thunderbird can work okay. It's just kind of tricky. You need a lot of follow-up. And... Like, best case scenario, they retreat. Worst case scenario, they approach. But then in that case, if you have stuff to follow up, it might even work. And it looks like air control is finally going to norm. Black Touchy is... Yeah, Black Touchy is losing a lot of their Hawks. And Norm's taking most of them. So Norm, at least, is getting back air control. But the ground war is very nearly won for Skazi and Black Touchy. Just with that Reaper Ball. There's five Reapers already. There's five Reapers, and there's no response escalation from Flipstip and Norm. They've lost most of their economy now, and it's basically just that. And, like, the Thunderbird was doing great against the Zeus's. I guess the Reapers, not so much. But against the Zeus's, just a bit more follow-up. A few more Raiders. Like, Scorchers on top of that probably would have done wonders. Or Slashers on top of that would have done wonders. But with the Reapers in there, that really doesn't do much. Like, Reapers, four Reapers, that is a huge deal. Like, that, that alone, that's 4,200 metal. Like, 4,300 metal, or 4,250. 4,250 metal is equivalent to, I think... In terms of slash, in terms of ravagers, even that's that is about seventeen ravagers for four reapers. Now, of course, the only downside is they're so concentrated, but there's really no raiding going on. Everything was attacked pretty heavily, and all of the southwest was taken early on. Not much was done with it. So it looks like we're just having the final reaper attack into the main base. Black Touchy going for the kill. Norm doesn't seem to be quite so keen on losing quite yet. But I think this is basically going to be it. So we're going to be moving on to game four pretty soon. Map choice by Flipstep and Norm. Let's see if it goes 3 2 or 3 1. Like 3 2 in either direction or 3 1. Because at this point, Flipstep and Norm have to win two games in a row in order to beat Skazi and Black Duchy. That's the only option right now. Two games in a row. That's it. If they cannot pull that off, they get second place. Silver medal, I don't know how many kudos. Of, oh, it's 50 kudos. That's it. 50 kudos. So they don't get 25 extra kudos. They don't get an extra flag or an extra clan banner or an extra skin. I think those are all 25 kudos each. In case you're wondering, for those of you, if anyone's just sort of walked in, either a browsing hitbox and happened to walk into the room, so, Zero K, as you've probably gathered by this point, is a real-time strategy game in the vein of Total Annihilation, in the sense that it encourages... Well, actually, it's small-scale Total Annihilation, and doesn't encourage as large-scale armies as TA does, and similar games like Planetary Annihilation, and Supreme Commander, of course. Probably the most famous of it, that genre. Or that, not genre, but that particular school of RTS. However, through some weird confluence of design, and just general ideas and brainstorming, there is something of an unlock system. And in addition to that, there's also something of a, there's a donation system because we need donations. And there's a, there's a little reward we call kudos. You get kudos for donating money. I think it's like a dollar per kudo or something like that. So if you donate like 10 bucks, you get a hundred kudos, I think. Anyway, I have to double check the numbers. I'm not entirely sure the numbers are. But basically, the the way it works is you use those to pay for skins. The entirely functional unlocks, which at this point are entirely commander modules, those you cannot pay for. The only thing you can pay for are cosmetics. Skins, fancy art for different weapons, clan and faction banners on top of your character, or on top of your, not character, on top of your commander. It feels like a character sometimes because of the level up system. On top of your commander. That's pretty much it. Yeah, that... So that's what they basically get, is the ability to purchase a couple skins. More or less. Anyway. That's... 
I'm not sure what they're going to use in the kudos. I mean, they're going to get at least 50. Whoever loses this gets 50. Whoever wins gets 75. I think it's one skin. Actually, I'm going to double check right now. I believe... But let's see. Because what I say is irrelevant if I'm wrong. Let's see. Under the unlocks tab... Oh, never mind. Okay, so clan and faction icons are 25 kudos. Skins are 100 each. And weapons... Weapon coloration is 50 each. So they can only get a weapon color or one clan and faction overhead icon. They can't get both weapon color and a clan or faction overhead icon. And in no case could they get a skin, actually. <laughs> Worth pointing out. Anyway, yeah, so that's... That is how it works, and I think... Does it say how many kudos you get for things? And actually, when I say dollars, I mean euros. Because it that's the currency. And we are going to be next game on Wanderlust, which is one of my other favorite maps. And for those of you keeping score at home, that is Wanderlust, Trojan Hills, Ravaged. Those are the favorite maps that I mentioned so far. That are my favorite maps. Those three. There are other maps too. But those are three of my three favorite maps. And there are other good maps too. And Onyx Cauldron, that's another really good map. We haven't actually seen that one. That's another one of my favorite maps. But we are playing Wanderlust. Anyway, this is not familiar. Kind of small map. Actually, really small. I'm a bit surprised that it was played. It does have two obvious start points, but we are going to probably see a center start from Norm. Like, red team going to start center probably, and for blue team, it's a little... It's a symmetry, but yeah, same idea. It's probably going to start over here, start over here. Like, probably centered and middle. Like, center and southwest, center and northeast. Might go for spread, though. Spread's a little bit risky, but if you spread it, like, here, and you just secure it along this side, you could secure this as well. Secure the center fairly easily. Flipstep is going for the obvious choice, though, going for center, as well as Norm going for northeast. Flipstep going for spider, Norm going for cloakies. While, on the other hand, Skazi and Black Duchy have yet to choose what they're doing. And it looks like Black Duchy doesn't particularly like this map, which, if they're a team player, they're probably not used to it. And Flipstep and Norm. Norm is a 1v1 player. I know Norm is a 1v1 player. Quite a good one. They've really improved a lot in the last few months, as I mentioned earlier. Flipstep is also a really good 1v1 player, as I've casted many of their games recently. So anyway, we are going to be starting as soon as I... I don't know, I'm chatting to the people in the chat. So yeah. Yeah, this is... It's 2-1. Two, 2-1, one. Two, one, Skazi to Flips... To, Skazi Black Skazi flips to Norm. If you're wondering, the people are talking because there were some games when Flipstick was on break and I was going to play Smash Bros. A bunch of other people were playing other 0K games, which I didn't want to mess with the win counter because I still haven't set up the set. I, I, I want to just, like, you click or double-click the win count and you have a window that lets you set the win count. I didn't... I haven't had a chance to really make that, unfortunately. I've been really busy recently. But I didn't have a chance, and mo focusing mostly on the camera. As you can see, the fancy little Zipcom stock camera. I was focusing on that. I haven't really been focusing on the wind counter as much. So I would like to do that, but I can't. So in the meantime, I just decided to avoid seeing the games. Anyway, Skazi and Black Duchy. Well, I should give the sound for the game. Skazi is going for Shield Bot Factory, while Black Duchy going for the Cloaky Bot Factory. And the colors are flipped again. Keep them flipped back and forth. So Flipstep going for spiders, like I said, going for pretty quick fleas. So you see flea into venom, while we have Skazi going bandit. Bandit mostly, some dirtbags. Bit surprised dirtbags, dirtbags gotta be first. Dirtbag is first. That makes sense. A couple dirtbags were built for scouting. And then glaze. Five glaze before the conjurer. So Black actually a little bit underconfident about the ability to defend here without getting a lot of glaze. And rightly so, because looks like Norm did the same thing. Five glaze first. Very aggressive starts all round. Actually, defending against this flea as well. Oh, trying to defend against the flea. Not doing so. Oh, managing to do it. Flipstep just walked into it. 
Bit of a bad thing there. But yeah, Flipstep just walked into that. And Black Duchy is actually in a really good position, just barely, but the Glaives were just out of position briefly. They are now in a much better position, however, Black Duchy is still able to surround them. So Norm being forced back just by slight numerical advantage. And Venom stopping the Dirtbag, not that that's doing much, but still, Venom is out. The Glaives are going to go down, but at this point, Black Duchy is still having an advantage, walking into Norm's base. This is a really difficult place to start in. I mean, a 1v1 game, this is kind of a risky place to start in. You are at the corner, but you're also kind of at the mercy of downhill. Here, you're also at the kind of the mercy of downhill. Actually, overall in this map, you're at the mercy of being downhill. It's actually one of the few maps where your main base is actually lower than the main map. The main map is in the center. It's it's actually one of the kind of thing, but one of the few cake maps that exist in this game. Or should I say, like, it's it's like a cake. You have the high ground in the center, and you have the low ground in the sides. Start at the low ground, and go to the high ground, and although admittedly, unlike most cake style maps in general, the term I think I think originated in Super Mario Night Combat. That's where I. That's the only place I've really ever heard it, other than this, other than my, me saying it myself. But yeah, Black Duchy is doing okay, but not great. Venom forcing those glaives back. Well, Scuzzy, on the other hand, sets up a bandit wall, goes for the flank. It's gonna be a little bit tricky to pull this off, but unfortunately they aren't coordinated as well as they need to be. Black Duchy, a bit out of position. These glaives can push the bandits back. The bandits forced to retreat. The glaive support not coming in in time. But instead, Black Duchy going over to the north to attack the north without being hit. Yeah, Black Duchy is going back. Raiding here, a flea does spot it out, but that's going to probably be able to kill Norm's commander. Norm's commander is probably going to, yeah, jump away. It's exactly what he needs to do. Get out of there. And it looks like Venom's stopped that dirtbag once again. Nothing really following it up because it doesn't matter. That's not the important thing. The important thing is these half dozen glaives, or eight or so glaives, which are now in turn getting flanked, despite the attempt to flank earlier. The bandits were chased away. The glaives going for that rear attack, but the glaives being chased back as well. Though at this point, Flipstep rather down an army. They haven't been building a whole lot of army. They're now going for Venom Redback. Common thing to do. And one of the Glaives gets caught out. Left behind. Get torn to shreds by that Venom. Glaives do not exactly have much honor among them. Many Glaives are left behind. That's just how they work. It's They're hardcore like that. So anyway, Norm is in a... Oh, that that Conjurer, not a good place to be. Right behind those bandits, as Black Duchy comes in, Black Duchy and Skazi are taking a lot of territory. And they have pretty much the entire map control over the center of the map. Some Glaives over to the northwest to try to take stuff out, which is a nice place to be. Good raid there, very little defenses. That was like one Conjurer, that was... Yeah, one Defender, that's about it. Great place to be, great attack point. A tick goes off, stuns out two of the Glaives, but the rest of the Glaives can actually come in... Oh, they can't quite deal with this. No, not quite. Follow-up forces are up in time. Black Duchy able to stop the entire raid force. Well placed, Tick. Very well done there. No further Ticks are apparent, though. You only really see in the icon view, but yeah, no other Ticks are apparent. The Glaives are coming in, and they are managing to do something. See, Venom coming in here, stopping out these bandits, trying to stun them out, doing a pretty decent job. The Redback able to follow up further... Bandits, the Redback will be able to take out one of the Bandits before this is a problem. Actually, both the Bandits. In fact, the Redback is in position. Three Bandits for nothing. Nicely done. Now, Norm and Flipstep, they are still kind of on the back foot. Economically, about even. Militarily, slightly behind. Positionally, they are not doing well. A lot of it has to do with the fact that, really, Skazi and Black Touchy just have a lot of territory. They haven't... Like, they have this area here they can use. They have... The oops, they have down here they can pretty easily take. This is pretty much theirs. I mean, Flipstep's trying to impede on it slightly, but it's not that much control. So Black Duchy and Skazi have a lot of map that they can just take and take the resources from. They haven't yet. Norm and Flipstep, on the other hand, they've taken a lot of the resources they can, which means they've pretty much exhausted most of their options. They can take this and maybe... No, not even that. They can maybe take this. It's really quite close. And another tick goes off down here. Doesn't really accomplish much. Redback gets rid of that one outlaw. So a shieldbot factory... Well, that's already, always been up. But it's now switching over to Felon Ball. Thug Felon. With a few outlaws and a few rogues for support. But at this point, Thug Felon pretty much from scratch. The Felon coming out first. 
and the felon actually being rallied out quite a ways away from the base. Could be very vulnerable in the meantime. However, thug, oh no, sorry, thug. A tick, perfect tick, taking out a bunch of glaives. And Venom's coming in to try to re take revenge, but it doesn't matter. At this point, Black Touch is getting a massive glaive ball. Norm needs to switch out from glaives. Norm cannot support going glaives anymore. They need to go pretty heavily for warriors. Or need to rely a lot more on Venom support. Like, need to coordinate a lot more with Flips to possibly even ask Flips to donate a Venom. That might be the way to go. Donate a Venom or two, and just have that as a way of making the... Just having that Force Multiplier. Because Venom is pretty much one-shot stun in any Raider. Glaives in particular. Like, Bandits have a bit more health, but Glaives... Pretty sure it's one-shot stun. Let's see, it is... 600... Yeah, it's one-shot stun. So they just stun out Glaives one-shot. But of course, that actually that has to hit. That means that the Venom has to be there, and there are a lot of Glaives here. I mean, this 22 some odd Glaives compared to 7. Yeah, that's... That is not going to work out. With Force Multipliers, it might be even. And more and more Glaives are coming in, more Erectors coming in, I mean Conjurers. Lotus is being built up on top of that. Like five Conjurers just now leapfrogging Lotuses. And we're seeing a hard push here. And remember, if Lipsip and Norm lose this, they're in second place. This is it. Like, Skazi and Black Touch, you just have to win this one. So if this push succeeds, that's the tournament. If this push does not succeed, then there's still a match going on. There's still a way of going out. And actually, oh, Felon missing. Hitting the side of the wall, losing all of its shields. That is a huge blow. That Felon going down, doing nothing, trying to hit basically off radar. Oops. If you look, they had radar on that. And there was radar wobble because it was at the side of the hill. Didn't know exactly where it was. I mean, it was radar wobble anyway, but it was the side of the hill. Didn't know where it was. Tried to shoot the hill itself. Or tried to shoot the clip itself. And this little ridge here that just stopped it getting in. That felon was wasted. Norm and Norm must be, or, or Flipstep must be very pleased. Both of them should be probably pleased because they're on the same team. But Flipstep in particular, they're Flipstep's units. However, Zeus coming in here, not doing too well against these. I don't know why. Why go for Zeus? Really, Norm? Go for ticks. Make sense. Glaives don't really make sense. Ticks don't make sense when you blow them when they're blown up on your own side. Other than that, they do make sense. Warriors make a lot of sense, especially at this point where it's just massive glaive. How many glaives are here? 27 glaives. Yeah, get get three or four warriors. Actually, get half a dozen warriors. Get a lot of warriors. You need warriors. In fact, you'll need warriors and venoms together to deal with this. This is just too many glaives. And over to the south, well, Skazi's just taking everything. Surprisingly, they're actually remaining fairly par fairly even in terms of economy. I think a lot of that's overdrive. It looks like there's, yeah, the expansions are actually not that much more naked. Yeah, there's some green overdrive over here, where it's just in the light cyan, so basically nothing. Whereas green's like two times or so. Yeah, because of the geo plant there. So these are running at about two times. So Flipsip and Norm are not out of the fight yet. But the unit choice, I do not agree with. Hammer's coming in. This I really don't agree with. There aren't enough defenses to really justify that on either side. Either to keep the hammer safe or for the hammers to hit reliably. And over to the south, and we see a lot of glaives coming over here, which is good to see. Definitely Norm is building up the glaive count. While Black Touching, on the other hand, has switched over to Rocco's, which is dangerous, to say the least, because on the one hand, the Rocco's are kind of powerful, especially against spider Buff Factory. But on the other hand, glaives beat Rocco's pretty much hard counter. So it'll depend a lot on usage. However, the commander, Norm's commander, needs to get out of there. Jump, Norm's commander, or die. Oh, okay, clutch jump. That was exactly when it needed to jump. Last second. Wasn't sure if that was going to do, but that's... That worked. The commander's not dead. That jump happened when it needed to, and now the glaive's going in when they definitely need to. What is there? There's got to be stuff here. There's a racket you're trying to stop, but that racket will not do the trick. Glaive should be able to take care of the factory. In fact, this entire base. Wow. So that base is down. I mean, it's kind of tricky, because that shield by factory should go down, but at the same time... The Glaives don't want to die. And the Shield Buff Factory will not go down. The Glaives being chased away by Black Duchy's Glaives. Norm doing a nice job with the Retreat Micro, but not that great of a job with the Retreat Micro. There's too many units to really Retreat Micro effectively. I mean, there's some LOS Micro trying to play around with the shield with the solar panels. Use them as sight blockers, but that Shield Buff Factory is not dead. 
So that wasn't really that valuable. And down goes the commander as well at the same time. Nice distraction there for everyone, really. Yeah, the commander went down thanks to the rockers at the same time. Norm was not focusing on that. Norm really is tired. Yeah, Blood Touchy. His calm died while he was micro. That was exactly right. Their calm died because they were micro. They were microing a lot. And that didn't amount to much. Really killing the factory. Probably better option, though, admittedly, I realize Norm's tired. Would have been split out like three or four of them, keep them on the factory the entire time, let them die. The rest of them go down and. I oh, can't really go around. But go down, take out some of this stuff, and then a few more of them go north. I like, just split completely. And at least that way you can just shred as much of the base as possible. Probably wouldn't get the Cloaky Factory on top of that, but still. At this point, Skazi and Black Dutchie are basically moving in for the final blow. Unless Black Dutchie gets hit by some warriors or something. Hammers are coming in, but that's not really doing the trick. Crab is coming in. That is doing actually quite a lot of damage. A little tough to work, but yeah, the crab being pushed along. The glaives look like they're trying to get it out of its rest mode, but it doesn't matter. That's actually a huge blow. Glaives getting ticked out, and then crab finishing them off. The black touchy loses their entire glaive ball in one go. Well, yeah, they're now stuck with Rocco ball, though 20 Rockos is still extremely scary. There's nothing to be joking about that. Absolutely terrifying. However, this... Yeah, the hammer's coming in here. Sharpshooter's coming in here. So the Rockos, they are going to be roughly countered by the hammers, but they're better countered by glaives. However, glaives are not the best choice. They are being built. A few of them are a good idea, but not exclusively. But yeah, at this point, warriors would be a bad idea. Warriors were a better idea earlier on. That might be what Norm had in mind, was thinking, well, they're probably going to go for Rockos anyway because of the Spiderbot factory, so I should avoid warriors because warriors get pretty heavily countered by Rockos. It depends on position. The Rockos can kite really well. And a roach goes out from the looks of it. Is that roach? I thought it was a roach. It was the same sort of explosion as roach, but apparently not. Well, I don't see any roaches on the map. Well, okay, obviously that was if that's a dead roach, that's no longer existing. However, even then, it's just that crab is moving forward. That crab is leapfrogging. It can it should attack less directly though. It's just hitting empty ground. <laughs> Turd is as good as dead. <laughs> It sure is. This map hitting the lower hardness. <laughs> this the hardness of the map is the only reason why it's actually remaining stable at this point. That'd be a giant pit by now, otherwise. However, the hammer is actually doing a pretty decent job. The sharpshooter does get spotted out, though, but still, those rockers can't really get in. And a tick, nicely placed tick, getting rid of all of these rockers. The glaives just come in, rip apart the rockers. The defenders will probably destroy them in the process, but that was worth it. Just keeping the rockers down, get attrition on the rockers. Not a whole lot else coming in here. This crab is still dealing a lot of damage. Racketeers for disarm are very nearly successful and have to be careful with the sharpshooter. This crab's trying not to get hit. It's trying to get out of the racketeer range, but it has to be wary of the sharpshooters because the sharpshooter can hit it. And a sharpshooter hitting a crab while moving, as mentioned before, is a third of its health. That is a bad thing. However, second crab is here getting rid of these Rockos. Flipstep and Norm, they are not behind economically. This overdrive... Overdrive is doing them wonders. As you can see, it's actually not even doing that, that much wonders. It's just they're getting enough to keep going. And from there, they're basically staying alive quite effectively. Flea's going out, spotting out the sharpshooters. Nice screen there. Well done. I've mentioned before in some of my 1v1 casts, you need to screen out... Actually, one of the analysis casts I mentioned with cloaked units, with the sides in particular. Sides with screening with darts. But yeah, screen with light units. Whenever you know cloaked units are there or suspect cloaked units are there, screen with light units. Because when the light units die, you don't care, they're too cheap. But if the heavy units die as a result, that's a huge deal and you don't want that to happen. Although, especially when you're considering that, I mean, at this point, no infiltrators have been built. But if they were built, that would be a, that would be a similar problem. It would immediately be a problem for Norm, which incidentally, Norm going, sorry, problem for Blue Team, for Skazi and Black Touchy. Norm going for Brawlers, at this point, one of them already being built, Another one under construction, probably two or three will be built before they attack. Though at this stage, this is 15 minutes into the game, we're getting pretty close, and uh, 15 minutes into a 2v2 game, we're getting pretty close to the point where striders wouldn't be a bad idea. Like 55 metal, actually you shouldn't say time so much, as metal. We're seeing 20-30 metal pretty stable across the board. It's still kind of swingy. It, we've ramped up to crabs, but are we going to ramp up further? Ramp up to Zeus, ramp up to crab. Ramp up to Hammer, ramp up to Brawler, but are we going to ramp up to Striders? Are we going to ramp up to, I mean, Tac Silo, Tac Nuke Silo would work. The Silencer would not. Silencer is way too much for this map. This map is just too small for it. it I, yeah, I don't see that happening. Maybe if a 
bit, if a couple fusions were built up, powered that much more overdrive, I might see it, but even then, that's really pushing it. However, attack noob silo is perfectly viable. That's that's like 10 metal a second. It's not that big of a deal. So the attack noob silo would be viable. Get a few just get a few infernos. Tear apart this army here. Tear apart these armies down here. Just to push it forward. I mean, clearly flips have been norm. They're working on an attrition strategy. They're just trying to push forward. Get that done. Kill that off. But now two brawlers coming in. They're working the attrition strategy, trying to get rid of all of Black Tushy's forces. And where are the gremlins? They are right behind. There's only one so far, though. These brawlers are actually going to have a field day tearing apart the Roccos right now. No longer in a group, mind you, but still, they're going to have a field day with these Roccos. And the Hammer's also pushing them back. I mean, the Roccos can't really hit the brawlers that effectively. They can sort of hit the brawlers, but very rarely. However, the Sharpshooters, on the other hand, as we just saw there, the Sharpshooters do a wonderful job with the brawlers. Getting rid of the Racketeer, a very good move. You want to get rid of that quickly, because that's that disarm really slows things down. I mean, we saw that crab earlier, that... This one here, that was actually quite heavily threatened, but not ultimately destroyed by it. And one of the brawlers has gone down. And another one... Oh, we I saw that, because the... And the other brawler's gone down now. Right, because the sharpshooter killed the first brawler. The second brawler goes down to the Rockos, ultimately. Not in the best position. Another brawler coming in. But yeah, with the Rockos, stay at max range. That's the thing to do. However, slowly but surely, Flipstep is creeping along the south side of the map. Creeping and just leapfrogging defenses as they go. And the commander surprisingly not pushing on this. Commander is upgraded, does have riot cannon. Surprisingly isn't helping out with this. Like he's not pushing this here. Not pushing up the Lotus. That is kind of necessary. And at this point it looks like, yeah, it's just they're donating metal. Yeah, that was that was a donation. I'm sure it was appreciated. However, Lipstiff and Norm, they're pushing back. This this entire tournament has been comebacks. Like, just comebacks and even matches. It's been really, really exciting. Like, the, not even matches. Like, none of this stuff, there's no bullshit going on. Like, I know Skazzy mentioned before that I got pissed off, like, two tournaments ago because it was just taking too long. Everyone thing was feeling really slowed down. But this match, it just feels like, no, the players are really trying. There's nothing they're really doing that they could be doing a lot better. That was a nice kill, by the way, on that crab. Nice timing. Waiting for it to move. Well done there. But yeah, the players are playing their hearts out. They're playing as best as they can. And they're just playing pretty evenly. But not a lot of all, there are some mistakes making, but not a lot of obvious mistakes. Not a lot of mistakes you could really call mistakes unless you know the entire state of the battlefield, as, of course, we all do who are watching. I do, you do. The players, however, do not. The players, of course, do not. That's why I often will look at what they can actually see, which in this case is not quite a lot of either base, though admittedly, Flips and Norm have much more knowledge of what Skazi and Black Tachi have than vice versa. Skazi and Black Duchy are really in the dark. Now, Skazi has gone for an air switch. They are getting Ravens up now, and in terms of air control, surprisingly, no Swifts. Gotta say, rather surprisingly, no Swifts, given that the Brawlers are... They are operating as just attrition forces. And attrition forces do cause issues. Do kind of want to stop that. However, a Sharpshooter here, gonna kill Flipsip's commander. It's like, as soon as he gets a clear shot... Be right about now. Okay. A little bit after, but I think my audio might have a slight sync issue, so that I think it should have worked out, timed out properly. So Black Duchy taking out Flipsip's commander. Still Flipsip ahead economically. They're ahead economically. They're behind militarily, but ahead economically. And of course, that means you gotta basically pile up your forces, make sure they don't die, make sure you win the attrition war, and then grind out from there. And seriously, attack nuke silo, that would actually not be a bad idea. I build them around here, send a few infernos in. That would just, you know, just torch enough to push through. Actually, it'd be really good against the sharpshooters. It would just stop them in their tracks. I'm a little surprised that none of the players thought of that. Not totally, though. Flipstep, Flipstep's much more awake than Norm is, though. So Flipstep, I'd be surprised they didn't think of that. They have enough money for it. They could easily support it. Not sure why they haven't done that. Norm, I can see why they haven't done that. I mean, they're, it's... <laughs> they probably got up... Well, they got the same time as I did. They got up at 1 in the morning. It's 10 a.m. now. They've been playing for the last 8 hours. On or off. Well, except before, as they were out. But yeah, they've been trying to stay awake and play, and that's just... I don't know if they slept beforehand. But yeah, I can totally understand where Norm's coming from. And actually, Skazi about to lose their commander, too. Or at least their commander's threat. Not really necessarily about to lose. No, never mind. About to lose. Yeah, that's not moving. Not responding to the hammers. That's level 3 commander. That's... That's a lot of Skazi's military, and that's... 
just barely not dead. The Glaives come in, tear apart the hammers, and mess that completely up. Now, of course, a Clutch Brawler could come in, tear that apart, but honestly, that's not that big of a deal. The Commander is not that big of a deal. I mean, I just, now that I know, I can normalize my ideas of what this means. So I'll subtract 3k from this. Regardless, Norm is still very much behind. Finally getting some Warriors up! The Rockers are still in play, but still finally getting Warriors up. And over to the south, we do see that we have Ravens coming in, trying to get rid of these Crabs. As the Crabs get into position, using the height to their advantage, nicely done, but it is going to be a bit tough. The impulse from the bomb will knock them about a bit. Oh no, never mind. I'm thinking Wyvern. The Ravens do not have impulse on their bombs, and down goes Skazi's commander. Took another try, but a crab got in and got the last shot in. Got the killing blow. With that, crab still inching forward. Now, Geoplant. Ah, didn't quite work. It wouldn't have mattered. Even if it closed up, that's a third. And it was even 800 divided by 3 is like 267, so it might have been 5 health. But yeah, Geoplant, that is the target. Now, I am surprised there are no Swifts. I'm not surprised there are now Swifts. I'm surprised there were no Swifts prior to this. Yeah, the Geoplant, Prime Target, or Fusion. Actually, yeah, Geoplant's Prime Target is weaker. But, of course, air units, or Grunt Ships can be bombed, which is probably why... I forgot about that. Skazi probably thought of that, which is why they didn't actually go for Swiss until just now. But the Geoplant still goes down. Skazi loses that Geoplant. Down on energy. Flips up considerably healthier for energy, and as a result, for the Overdrive. Now, over to the north, we see that there is this small inch forward. The Warriors are just inching forward for Norm. Still not quite there. It's not quite there for the army cost yet. But a crow... Okay, Norm is really gambling here. They are gambling insanely. They have... They don't have the energy so much. They need more energy, but they are reclaiming a lot. They're pushing a crow. They have to live for about five minutes. Maybe a bit longer, actually. Crows are quite expensive. Actually, yeah, 4,500 metal. They have to live... It looks like 10 minutes at this point. That's sort of an ace in the hole if the game goes that long. If the game drags on that long, they're managed to stay alive that long. But in the meantime, Flipstip is the only one who's actually keeping anything going. Flipstip has to now defend pretty much single-handedly against everything Black Touching and Skazi throw. So for the next five minutes, it's going to be effectively a one-on-two. Now, that being said, Flipstip has been doing a wonderful, wonderful job at actually pulling that off. But honestly, here's the Ravens. The Ravens, they're going to come here, they're probably going to go over here, they're probably going to attack, and they're going to find the Crow. Now, Norm at this point is actually reclaiming a lot, and has now just gotten a bunch of energy again, apparently. Okay, the wind generator has just kicked in. But even with that, the crow isn't actually growing all that quickly. Okay, two minutes, two or three minutes, still, that's that's pretty slow. If that crow gets in, that's going to be quite big. But the brawlers are all out. Like I said, the brawlers are out. The swift spots it, the swift spots the crow. So Skazi and Black Touchy fully aware there's a crow, and the ravens go in to deal with it. Getting rid of this pylon first, surprisingly. Okay, one of them going over to the Lotus. Nothing to the factory yet, nothing to the caretakers. The caretakers are probably a bigger priority. Although the Swift is doing a bit of damage. But still, caretakers kind of the priority. Still, that was not a bad shot, but at the same time, Flipstip is inching forward. The crabs, are there, or in some cases the venoms, but the crabs primarily are just slowly but surely zero, just smashing through everything. They're zeroing in on the factories, they're tearing apart. If they hit this air repair pad, that's going to be huge. That's going to completely eliminate Skazi's air force power, because that's the amount of reload time that'll increase everything by. That would buy about two minutes every single bombing run. Especially given that this crab will just die, though. Unfortunately, that will be a problem. But yeah, that's the thing. If this if this air pad goes down, that's a huge deal. And these sharpshooters are still not down. This is where napalm missiles would be so handy. Infernos, infernos would be a thing to do. Flipstip, I do agree with the crabs. I just think that on top of that, one or two inferno missiles would probably do the trick to get rid of these. Or just a few fleas. Actually, you know, quite a few fleas. Like, a bunch of fleas to screen through. Because, like I said, screen for cloaked units. That's the thing. But despite that, like, regardless of that, Norman Flipstip are doing a wonderful job. 20 seconds left for that crow, by the way. Also, I should point out, general piece of advice, never build anything if it takes longer than a minute. Like, if it takes longer than a minute, you need more resources to build it. Just, not always true, but, you know, general rule of thumb. Crows are a bit of an exception because they are very expensive. The striders in general are kind of an exception, but even then, if it takes more than a minute, seriously question why you're building it. Or if it's the right time. And, as I say that, Flipstep builds a ton of fleas just to screen out for sharpshooters. 
doing exactly the right thing. So Flipstep knows what's up, or they're stream sniping, which shouldn't be possible because this is a minute delay or so. And that was less than a minute, but hey, they did the right thing. They know where they are, and the crow going over to deal with this. Now this is a bit risky because that's 1,600 health, that's... That 16,000 health there is going to go down very rapidly to everything. And so that crow not really able to get any shots in. Bear in mind, when I said everything, I meant everything. As you can see, bo getting bombed out as well. And another crow is being built, isn't it? Yep, yes it is. And that crow, unfortunately, not able to really do a whole lot of damage, meaning the sharpshooters aren't really under much threat. Yeah, I don't really see that working out too well. And the south side getting slowly but surely pushed back. Like a chainsaw would actually do wonders here. A chainsaw or 20. <laughs> okay, a chainsaw or like 5 or so. 5 or so chainsaws, if they have been built for the last several minutes, would have been a really good idea to have. Although admittedly, the sharpshooters would have put a real damper in that. But still, it would have been, it would have been a good idea. And the Glaive's now trying to screen for the sharpshooters. They will be able to find a couple of them. Maybe even kill them. Nope, not kill them. Killing them is out of the question. But definitely find them. Now, what I'm a little bit surprised... No, not surprised by it. The crow really can't do much. I'm actually kind of surprised where... Okay, the gunship factory not doing much right now. That I'm not surprised by. Not in the least. But like I said, just get a few chainsaws. Not really a whole lot exists right here that's going to be super effective anti-air other than its own air, other than Swiss. Which red team is not building at all. Tridents would also be a good choice. Although I think Tridents do get bombed. I think... I'm pretty sure Ravens can bomb Tridents like any other gunship. That's still a risky option. That's a risky proposition. But it might just work. However, the south side definitely weaker. And the south side has been weakened systematically by Flipstep as they've been going along, but unfortunately Flipstep has lost a lot of their economy. Skazi and Black Touchy are now pushing ahead once again, and that crow looks like it is probably going to end. The use of that crow is probably going to end things. I don't really see a whole lot that's going to go in their favor. I mean, it's possible. There might be some stuff. I just don't see it. Like, this crow can't really do much. It's 4,500 metal just packed into something that's effectively useless at this point. If that was 4,500 metal worth of Swifts and Hawks, air control would be norms right now. But it's not. However, the crow is trying to move forward now with a bunch of anti-air support. A bunch of gremlins trying to help deal with this. Okay, that's not all of theirs. Okay, seriously. Give me only their... whatever. It's 15 or so. Yeah, trying to use that to get rid of everything coming in. The Gremlin's actually operating as support. Now the Crow is still getting heavily damaged, but at least the Crow can move forward. Still, five Sharpshooters. That's 7,500 damage right there. As soon as the Crow gets below 7,500 health, those Sharpshooters can all fire and destroy it. But now the Glaze... the Glaze come in. Can the Glaze get... yeah, the Glaze can't really get in. The Sharpshooters, however, wasting a bunch of their shots, and the Crow wisely going over to the south side of the map, where it's weaker, and where the Crabs are the focus. And now, go for that repair pad. That's the big thing. Needs to degun on the repair pad once the bombers are on it. Please do that, because that will win you the well, win you the game, but that will put you into a very, very favorable position. Like, right... Oh, it's too late now. Still, the gremlins are actually in position, but yeah. Degun here? Perfect! That's exactly right! That's exactly what was needed. Well done, Norm. You, pay, you made that pay off. Got rid of the repair pad. That'll slow down those bombers. I mean, immediately... Most of the bombers are dead, but that would really slow them down. Go to the factory, too. That's going to be a big deal. I mean, getting rid of these gremlins on top of that. I mean, this is 4,500 metal. That has to pay for itself. It's already killed one factory. If it kills a couple power plants as well, that's going to definitely make cost. I mean, it just needs to not die inside of inside of the territory of the enemy. Like, blue team's territory, if it dies in there, that's kind of game. And now a bunch of gremlins. No glaives! Sharpshooters, six sharpshooters moving in, while the crow just moving back slightly. And Hermits and Crabs just taking in once once all the Air Force is gone. Well, I think I think Norm might have managed to do this, but I'm not sure. It's a tough call, but got oh nice. Fusion Pra the Fusion Raptor blowing up. Destroyed all the gremlins, but this crow cannot die. Actually, how many crows are there? But yeah, that crow can't die. However, the crab is in the base. If it gets rid of this air plant, then there's nothing to really be done for re rebuild, rearm. The planes are going to be pretty much dead in the water. Not going to have much they can do at that point. And the crow gets away. Able to survive to be repaired to fight again. Presumably to the north, although I mean, it's going to be much riskier with all the sharpshooters, but it looks like some of the glaives... Glaives are being thrown in 
kind of a meat grinder. You need about a dozen or so, two dozen or two dozen glaives to deal with all this. But still, that was a nice shot. And the crabs, or not the crab, yeah, crab and hermit. Or just, yeah, crabs, crab and two hermits dealing with the rest of Skazi's base. And they can move north from there. Now, of course, the sharpshooter is a problem. But given that the sharpshooters have moved away, now, this isn't something that Flip Zipper and Norm would know. But if they find this out, that crow is going to go over to the north and it's going to rip to shreds. So that 4500 metal in a small package managed to work. But it looks like we are going to see... Oh man, how much... Yeah, the crabs are moving in. How many crabs are there, by the way? There's only two, actually. Looks like the crab in here was destroyed by the sharpshooters. And these are still alive. These... The flea, the hermits, all still alive. Nice assault units. But the crab down, but still the crab, that's... That is the big siege unit. And that's done its job. That's done its job and then some. At this point, all Norm needs to do is defend this. Actually, it's not going to be too hard either. That crow comes in here, it can tear this all apart. That crow just needs to come in here. That's the only thing. And actually, the, the air control is entirely in Norm's... It, it's Norm's. Norm is air control, though admittedly, Skazi is getting another repair pad. But still, the loss of that first repair pad really put a big damper in it, along with the loss of the entire Air Force thanks to the Gremlins. That was a massive blow. As you can see, there's like a couple Swifts, a couple Ravens. That's about it. And a Crow. And that Crow's fully healed, or almost fully healed. It should be moving out pretty soon. But the Crab also operating, once again, as an attrition force. Third Crab taking care of most of the stuff. And it looks like Skazi and Black Touch, you throw in the towel. We're moving on to game five. Tiebreaker, Flip Dip and Norm. If they win it, they win. This is it. Down to the wire. So it's Flip Dip and Norm. Who won? Skazi and Black Touch get map choice. And I'll be back in just a minute once that gets started. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, come back. I did not expect a crow. I've not expected a lot of the stuff going on in this matches. I I thought, like I said, I was skeptical of the crow. You, you heard me be skeptical of the crow. Norm made it work. Well done, Norm. Picked the right targets. I mean, obviously didn't know about the air. But once they found out about the air, they pulled back, they repaired, they built up the gremlins, they did everything they needed to do to win that game. Possibly could have done something more efficiently, but it worked. They won. So we're going to move on to game five. It's going to be Skazi and Black Touchy's map choice. I don't know what map I'm going to go for. Find out pretty soon. But I'll be back in just a couple minutes with that. So stay tuned.
Okay. Back. Hello, welcome back, Zero K fans, to Game 5! Game 5 of the finals, the absolute final game that could possibly be played in this tournament. And it's going to be on a map called Tempest, which I have actually never seen before. But it is big! As you can see, it is very, very big. It is a map with a big bowl in the middle. It has water all throughout the middle. It's pretty deep water from the looks of it. Yeah, it's fairly deep. Looks like it's definitely amphib suitable, probably not sea suitable, though I wouldn't be surprised. Actually, no, it could work for sea. It could totally work for sea. However, I doubt we'll be seeing a sea start. Air start's very likely, as we see already, Black Duchy is going for an air start. And overall, the amount of metal, I mean, we're looking at 1.5 each with several four spots. It looks like there's a four spot to the east, to the west, none apparently to the north or south. Purely east or west. And there are are no other high metal spots. Everything else is about 1.5, but that one there is about 3.6. Three, 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 three and two thirds. 3.67. And there are actually two more. There are two more. There's two in the water as well. But that's in the center, and by that point, that's going to be a lot of metal. So expect this to last a little while, and probably involve a lot of striders and a lot of other advanced tech, as has been the case so far, and as actually has been pretty cool so far. We have Black Duchy going for air right off. We have Norm as well going for air, as typical. Norm's been often going for air. Flips have going for hovercrafts, which makes sense given the sheer amount of water. No reason to force yourself to go around the sides. This water over here, however, is shallow enough that units could pass through it, but shallow water is, of course, a little bit iffy. The thing with shallow water is that if you're passing through it, or units are passing through it, rather, they will slow down a bit. Not usually all that much, but they will slow down a bit, and of course there are these little pits where the metal extractors are. And those are quite deep. Those are not shallow water. But hovercrafts don't care. Hovercrafts just go through. And it looks like we are getting hovercrafts on both sides. Skazi and Flipstep have had the exact same idea. This big map. Which makes me kind of glad I have the zooming set up the way I do. Because it is a massive map. I'm going to need to be zooming in and out a lot. So Norm going for early... Okay, Norm and Blackjuchy both going for early swifts. Black Duchy, Swift, and Hawk, very focused on air control. Norm just focused on Swift alone, just relying on the Swift missiles to deal with everything. Just the high alpha, rather than relying on the reliability and health. And Flipstip and Skazi both going for a lot of... They're both going for a lot of daggers, although it looks like Skazi is going for... Well, did they go for Quill first? Yeah, actually, they both went Quill first. In both cases, Quill first, which makes a lot of sense. And Norm... Norm and Black Duchy both handling the air, though Norm doesn't have as many swifts up as quickly. They should be able to take out one of them. Actually, oh, did they take out, they took out both. One on two. That swift did a fine job. Got kind of lucky, but yes. That was the best swift. It did a wonderful job. So Black Duchy right now is actually quite behind in terms of air. Having lost all of their air force to a single swift. And having yet another swift in their base harassing things out. So this hawk here will be a problem. That, that swift needs to get out of there. That, that swift needs... There we go. Needs to degun out of there. Or, well, boost out of there. And get back. Repair. Then get up front again. And the other swift... I mean, the thing is, two swifts against a hawk, it kind of comes down to the initial positioning, but three swifts against a hawk is basically the swift's win. Because the more swifts there are, the alpha's higher. That's, that's the big thing. That's the entire thing. Because they fire all these missiles off, and their alpha is insanely high. Now, at the same time, some daggers going all the way over to the west side of the map. Flipstep sending some daggers over to the west side of the map, while Black, D sorry, while Skazi focusing entirely on the center, just focusing on all the units in the center. Now, remember, this is Skazi and Black Duchy's pick. Flipstep and Norm won the last game, so they probably have something up their sleeve. This is a very unusual map. You don't, I've actually, like I said, never seen this map before. I'm not entirely sure what they have planned. I'm guessing it does involve, like, obviously hovercraft. Might involve sea later on, I'm not sure. Like building a warlord or something in the center of this big lake. Be a little bit weird to I mean lake battleship, but hey, why not? Because that's a behem that's three behemoths in one. And it floats. Mobile. Three mobile behemoths in one. But that probably won't happen for another half hour or so if the game lasts that long. So yeah, Scuzzy and Black Duchy, I think part of it might be similar to game two where they went into Red Comet, just trying to win by fundamentals alone, rather than trying to win by gimmicks or by using the map. And Because Ravage was the first map, and of course there was the whole air thing that just ended up winning it for them. For Skazi and Black Duchy. 
and then no for flips have been norm and then fundamentals for red comet so skies and black tree one and then again we saw in wanderlust no one else is the last one so on intersection that skies and black Dutchie were able to just push back against flips dip and norm's forces and that was that was also kind of fundamentals though i was just like economy macro once it got in the late game how to deal with late game how to deal with anti-heavy units or how to deal with heavy units and that was something that Skazi and Black Dutch just know better, or apparently know better. So I'm guessing they're trying to do the same thing here. High economy map, giant map, so much metal, and enough space that they could safely build some Striders. Probably safely build a Warlord if they wanted to. We'll see if that happens, though. I mean, they might go for a Silencer. Once again, we might have yet another Silencer. Two Silencers in one tournament, the first time. I mean, we never have Silencers in the tournaments. But yes, that is what's probably happening. Skazi and Black Touchy are about the same economically as Flipstep and Norm, though Flipstep and Norm are a bit more even. And Norm focusing heavily on air, gaining the repair pad, makes sense for this size of map. Norm does have air control at this point, though it's a little tenuous. They haven't completely annihilated Black Duchy's air force, but they do have their air in a position that will work nicely. I don't know how much I agree with the repair pad being that far back, though. I kind of agree with it, because the one hand, it's easier to defend. But on the other hand, the repair pad is kind of where the air units stage. And having to go that far back, for Swifts it makes sense. For the bombers later on, I'm not sure how much it will. But then again, repair pads aren't that expensive. They're 350 metal each. They can, you can afford them. You can afford them. And nice, nice initial shots off from the Swifts that come in from Norm. Getting rid of a crane too, very quickly. Nice, nicely done. That was very much necessary. Getting rid of yet another Swift. Though admittedly... All the Hawks and Swifts are on their six now. These Swifts need to boost away. And surprisingly, they didn't. But yes, that two of them could have died. Yeah, boosting into territory. That was a bad move because they didn't have any boost left. They've just now gotten their boost back. What am I doing? There we go. They've just now gotten their boost back. But before, they didn't have it. That was definitely a mistake. And at the same time, Skazi coming in with the Hovercraft, coming in with all these forces... I gotta say, this is actually a pretty, a pretty map. I don't totally agree with the Skybox choice, but otherwise it's a very pretty map. So, we have Skazi going in the southwest side with these daggers. They're doing quite a lot of damage. I mean, they're gonna be... Well, they can easily do quite a lot of damage. They haven't totally done enough damage yet, I think, to be justified, but they can get around. They can do a bunch of stuff. They're just crawling up this hill. That's the only thing. This is... This is pretty hilly. That's the thing. This map... It's hard to tell, but it does have a lot of elevation difference. There's a lot of elevation variation, and it does give the hovercrafts a bit of a hard time going up the slope. Going up the slope is a bit of a tricky thing. Amphibs would be not the best choice, given the size of the map. But not a terrible choice, given the fact that the map is very hilly. Still, the hovercraft, the daggers, they're doing fine. And we see that Flipstep does have some maces set up in case the daggers come down here to attack, which they probably will. And at the same time, Fliptip is going north, basically trying to mirror Skazi, though not quite as effectively. That being said, there actually is a pretty free opening. Oh, this is open. This is open, and I don't think that Fliptip sees it. No, Fliptip does not see it at all. And in fact, going to lose one of their daggers, partly because they didn't see it. But it looks like, yeah, that dagger's going to go down. Trying to do its best to fire in the sky with the Gauss. It's... Not the most effective. And Skazi coming in with her own daggers, which will finish everything off. Yeah, Skazi is going to basically force everything back. Flipstep is forced back. Actually, Flipstep's forces are destroyed. So Flipstep is falling slightly behind. But we have seen before, like, Norman Flipstep's entire game plan seems to be lose for the first half of the game and then win. That seems to be generally their game plan in games that they win. Like the first game, they attacked with air, they got hit kind of hard with the puppies, and then they just... Actually, that one was pretty much, they stabilized quickly, and Skazi and Black Touching never really expanded enough. But the last game was lose for the most majority of the game, and then win. I don't think they're going to be playing that this time, because in a large map like this, it's kind of hard to do that. But then again, we did see in, the, I think the previous game, actually, in the game that they played against Google Frog and Aquinum, that, that's actually not an invalid strategy. The DSD game with the nukes? That... Wait, that wasn't them. That was... That was the one with the Anarchid. That was Anarchid's Skazi Black Touchy. 
So yeah, Skazzy and Black Dutchie are also known for, in this tournament, lose until the end of the game, then win. Flipsip and Norm, however, have been showing themselves to be quite proficient as well. And nice shots by Flipstep, getting rid of a lot of these metal extractors and not losing any daggers yet. 90, well, 90 per dagger. At this point, those daggers really shouldn't die. Like, they should get out of there. That's the best option. Just leave. Get those daggers out of there because they're kind of getting surrounded. Scassy's coming in here, going to take care of one of them and actually loses two of their own. But at this point, all of Flipstep's daggers are going to go down once again. That was a mistake to engage. That engagement was a total mistake. It's really not the thing you want to do. Now I should point out the maces are not in position, not up front. They're not even close. Where are the maces anyway? I don't actually see them around here. Oh, that's why, because they were going over to the sides. Yeah, there's some over the sides, and it looks like, well, Skazi has one of their own. Yeah, some over to the sides. One for Skazi in defense, one for Flipsip on offense, another for Skazi kind of in mid, and the other mace I can't find. Oh, because it's under production, that's why. So, from this point, it looks like no real change in production, though. Just a lot of maces from Flipstep, not many maces from Skazi, mostly daggers from Skazi. This plays right nicely into Flipstep's hands. And at this point, map air control is kind of hard to call. The use of flails is going to really tilt things, but it depends on the position at that point. In terms of current map control, in terms of air control, in terms of the number of units being built, I'm pretty sure Norm is behind. Fairly certain that Black Touchy has more potential to actually kill something, just take air control entirely, but that depends on position. That depends on, like I said, the flails. That depends on... That's just about it. But yeah, flails. That will make the difference. Possibly even daggers, but I kind of doubt it. But yeah, whoever has the flails first will basically win. And Norm, not making the same mistake as before. They are going for Swifts first. They are trying to get the air control right out, trying to go solidly for air control. However, not fighting on top of their... They, yeah, boosting away. They're not fighting on top of their anti-air. They need to fight on top of their anti-air. They need to not fight on top of the opponent's anti-air because there were defenders here. They need to fight on top of all the flails. That's what they need to do. If they do that, then it's fine. If they don't do that, then they're hoops. And we do have a factory switch coming here. A ground switch into light vehicle factory. While Flipstep also goes for a switch into sea. The ships. Right in the center of the map. Right in the lake. Going for that shipyard. Now I should point out that the shipyard could be built in the shallower area here. I mean, it's not that shallow. This is too shallow. I think. Oh no, it's even that's not too shallow. Yeah, shipyards are pretty flexible like that. But no, build, building it right in the deepest area of the lake. Right at that drop-off. Right at that cliff right there. Actually, how does that look underwater? I don't really see it. Yeah, let's see. Yeah, it's right. There is a big drop-off here. And that's pretty flat. Anyway, that, so that shipyard is up and running. Light Vehicle Factory up and running for Flipstep as well? It would appear so. Yes, indeed. Inside the main base, there is a Light Vehicle Factory. Flipstep and Norm are actually ahead economically on top of this. They are keeping up. Though admittedly, I mean, we can go with Skazi and Blatchichi, because I thought Skazi and Blatchichi were kind of ahead, but no, they are definitely not. Skazi and Blatchichi are just falling behind, putting a lot in the air, but not a lot into expansion. And as a result, Flipstep and Norm are just pulling ahead from that. They're behind militarily, that's what I meant. Black Dutchie is well ahead militarily. Skazi is about on par with Flipstep or Norm. But that military difference, however, Shredders. There are Shredders eventually in... Yeah, there are some. Some Skeeters are going to come out first, but this is building very quickly. So it'll be another half minute, no, another few seconds for the Typhoon, and then another 10 seconds or so for that particular Shredder. And it is in the loop, so that's good, because that means these hair units are basically done for. The flails, the shredders, that'll just rip them to shreds. However, given that, Skazi is going along the southwest side, trying to harass as best they can. It's tough, though. Flipstep and Norm do have a very, well, fairly secure position. The Swiss are doing a decent job, but there is a nearly critical mass of daggers. Nearly critical. I wouldn't say it's totally a critical mass, but it's very close to a critical mass of daggers to deal with those Swiss. And with that critical mass comes a very difficult time actually dealing with them. Now, Black Dutchie's Air Force not even bothering to deal with this. In fact, yeah, the Skazi's losing all those daggers now. Like more and more daggers being lost, but Black Dutchie getting even more and more of an Air Force. Not sure what they're waiting for, but if I had to guess, I would say they're just waiting until they think they have air dominance and then swap over to Ravens, which they are in fact doing. 
They have just started to build ravens. Or, wait, no, they haven't. Not just? What am I saying? There's... There are other ravens in the field. Yeah, because they haven't just started to build ravens, but they are converting over to ravens. And that is the only factor, though. It's the only thing they have is ravens, daggers... It's just... The thing is, basically, Skazi and Black Dungeon aren't escalating. Flipton and Norm are a fairly secure position, and they're escalating from where they are. They're adding C, they're adding higher cost units, they're adding quite a few higher cost C units, and Crusader would be perfect from here. They're taking over the water, just to be safe. That wasn't escalating that much, but they're escalating in terms of numbers, if not in terms of tech. But at this point, yeah, it's just... There's not much that can be done to take the... Like, the water basically now belongs to Flipstip. Or very nearly belongs to Flipstip. If not yet, it will soon. The only thing that's really needed is Typhoon. The Shredder here needs to not die. Because if it doesn't die, then the entire sea is pretty much Flipstip territory. Flipstip's air territory. Or, sorry, not Flipstip. Norm's air territory. Flipstip's sea territory. And Norm is just going to be able to tear apart a lot of this. With all these Swifts here, how many Swifts are just here alone? 35 Swifts that are basically, those are all of Norm's Swifts, whereas Black Duchy has about 22 Swifts and 16 Hawks. And now there are the Flails getting rid of two of those Swifts. While Ravagers come in as well, Ravagers and Levelers, and there are also, like I said, a bunch, there were a bunch of Scorchers that were in production. Oh, never mind, that's Flipstep. Flipstep's getting the Scorchers over to the east side of the map. Sending them over to the north, trying to get rid of this commander, effectively. At this point, getting rid of a commander makes no difference. But hey, why not? And now Swift's coming over to the north side, and... Getting heavily damaged, these Swifts here. 21 Swifts, 20 Swifts, 19, 12 Swifts! Oh, that is extremely painful. They boosted in. Again, they boosted in. The only benefit to this is if it puts... Oh, and the Shredder's dead. I was about to say, the only benefit is if it puts... Black Touchy into a false sense of security causes them to attack over the ocean, and then loses all of his, their all their air force to a Shredder. That's the only way that would have been a beneficial thing, and that's not going to happen because the Shredder's dead. There are more Shredders coming in, this one right here, for example. But I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. This is the only Shredder currently on the field. And the Ravens try to get rid of the Ravagers, not really doing much of a job there. Black Duchy able to start getting rid of all these wind generators, which incidentally, 1.3215, these are very valuable targets. Yeah, kill them. Kill them hard. That's that's a good thing to do. I mean, right now, Skazi and Black Duchy, as you can see, 370 energy, 242 energy. Losing these wind generators is a big deal. They aren't relying on them so much for overdrive, but still, just getting rid of the energy, not a bad idea. Although Geoplant was eliminated by Skazi at the same time. Over to the east, we have Mace coming in here. Over to the center, we have another Typhoon trying to get rid of a Mace, trying to secure the sea. Over to the north, some Scorches coming in, which aren't going to do too much. And the Ravagers still continue to do quite a bit of damage over to the northwest side of the map. And the southwest side, we do have this dagger getting rid of one quill, and nothing to defend against that. And once again over to the north, the Ravager just getting finished up. However, it did manage to deal with quite a bit of damage to the wind generators. Not all that much ultimately, though. And the Scorchers coming in along the other side to deal with this. If it gets rid of these wind generators, they're very close. Not chain explosion close, but still quite close. And over to the south, there's actually not much. A bunch of stuff being built up. A lot of action, then not much at all. But now we have the Skeeters being built up. We have more Shredders. Two Shredders up yet. So far, two Shredders. And the Air Force just not really vulnerable. The Flail's trying to get rid of as much as they can. But really, that's not the most efficient choice. The Scorcher's trying to get in here. Can they do much? And the answer is no, not really. Because they're in a terrible position right now. They're not in a position to deal with these right away. And over the west side of the map, we have Flipstep's anti-air doing what it can, getting rid of a few ravens here and there, but at this point, getting rid of a few ravens here and there, that's not going to do it. Norm, similarly, is trying to send in a bunch of ground forces. Actually, not doing a bad job, and in fact, Norm has pretty much rebuilt their entire Swift Force. I mean, they've, just been, they've been pumping out Swifts this entire time. And a few cranes from time to time, but yeah, largely pumping out Swifts. And these Scorchers doing another wonderful job getting rid of all these wind generators once again, and breaking the overdrive chains, by the way, that's a big thing too. They're breaking the overdrive chains. So the power grid is being just broken apart. Though admittedly, it's pretty independent at this point anyway. It's not that big of a deal if it's broken apart. But still, it is being broken apart. And more Swifts getting rid of all the Ravens, or very many of the Ravens, if not all of them. Looks like most of the Ravens. However, the Anti-Air coming in to deal with that. And another Geothermal Plant out. Just getting revenge for the one that was killed down here. Which is being rebuilt, by the way. And the Wind Generator has gone down. On top of that, we have all the Swifts 
that are once again going down. Like once again, Black Duchy kind of reasserts air control, but at the same time, the ground war is going to Norm. Norm and Flipstep have won the territory war pretty much. The sea war is theirs. The Shredders make the air war pretty much impossible to fight over the sea, so that's in completely safe territory for a red team. The sides are done. Norm and Flipstep have taken it. I don't see any way. I mean, we see there are pockets of resistance. Gazi has a bunch of daggers around the map, a bunch of halberds coming in, trying to just break through things. I really think that claymores would be much more valuable than anything else being used right now, but hey, that wouldn't be... It's not a bad idea to use the halberds. Maces are a little iffy, but yeah, halberds not a bad idea. Claymores wouldn't be a bad idea, but still, this is... This is still pretty solidly in Flipstep and Norm's favor. This is Red Team's favor. Red Team actually... 146 metal! Okay, this is when you build a silencer. Because why not? I don't see one though. I don't see anything in that effect. Or missile silo or anything crazy like that. But yeah, 130 metal and you're accessing. Build 10 caretakers. Build a missile silo of some description. Oh, lost the repair pad. That is a, that's a blow. Not a huge blow, but still a blow. Would have rather not had that, I'm sure. And Shredder, two Shredders going down for free. Trying to take out the Air Force. Not really doing all that much damage from the looks of it. But still taking that out, which is really unfortunate. And still 102, 198 metal. Like they have, they have twice the metal as Gazi and Black Duchy. They're accessing, and they don't. I mean, admittedly, yeah, there is excess donation thing. But still, just how are you going to spend it all? Well, the answer is basically just building a bunch of ships. Not even expensive ships, just a large number of ships. And now at this point, CPU time. My goodness. CPU time, really high. Everything really high. Yeah, it's just all this stuff. As you can see, it's also my CPU time. I actually don't even want my FPS counter on, but yes. This many units is rather hard to perform with. And this is the old engine that was considered to be decent. Yeah, I don't know. I, hopefully some later version will eventually bring it back down again. I bring the time down, bring the performance up for large numbers of units. But hey, for one of you, one it works fine at least. So anyway, Norm is trying to deal some damage over here. Same time on the east side, not much is actually happening. Over here, more daggers trying to come in, but really no longer raiding phase. Hasn't been raiding phase for 10 minutes. Get with the program, Skazi. Skazi actually is starting to go with the program, though. They are building a shipyard. Not anything with it yet, but they are building a shipyard. They are trying to push even more with other units. I see no striders, though. I see no strider hub. I see no strider from either player. I see no silencer. I see no missile silo. I see no behemoth, doomsday machine, annihilator. I don't really see anything that suggests pushing into the late game. Although, to be perfectly honest, Flipstip and Norm don't need to. They're doing just fine with what they have. And Skazi and Black Dudgy would be foolish to do so because it'd be a, well, it'd be a gamble, basically. Like, they might be able to pull it off, but that would be investing everything into one Hail Mary throw. And I don't think that would work out. Just to be honest, see the amount of territory they have. Let's try Nuke for lulls. Well, if you can survive three minutes, go for it. And yes, the Silencer is, in fact, being built. Actually, not just three minutes. It's going to be however long it takes to build the thing. So if you can survive seven minutes, because it'll take that long to build the thing, and then, okay, maybe less than that. If you can survive five minutes, yeah. Okay, go for the nuke. Why not? For the lulls, maybe you'll get a good shot off. I really don't see any good shots. There's a reef being built in the shallows, because why not? Flips up got that off. Actually, that wouldn't be a terrible spot to fire at. It's a lot of resources located in one spot. So I think this area is probably the biggest one. Or just get the air factory, or it's just there aren't a lot of really good central locations to fire on. However, the silencer has been spotted. Norm knows about the silencer, putting a nice little label on there, or a little point on there. However, Norm has lost all the Air Force once again. And, I mean, at this point, Flipstip doesn't really have... Flipstip and Norm can't easily smash this apart. Flipstip is very dependent on the sea. They have a lot of subs just to make sure that they aren't getting hit in the sea. But they are fairly dependent on the sea. Not a whole lot has escalated beyond what we saw before. It's been kind of stable. We do have the Reef. Not a Warlord, which is kind of mentioned before, but I think the Reef is going to be able to stay alive. There's not a whole lot of anti-air being built by Flipstep other than the air-based anti-air, which if that starts to attack, the Shredders will finish it off. So the Reef would probably just bait that out. And otherwise, I don't really see anything else that would make a difference. The only problem is, how does this Reef get out? But it looks like, nope, never mind, no nukes. Well, Black Duchy might still go for it. Black Duchy may just decide, forget it, I'm going to go. Scussy's already surrendered on their own. Yeah, no nukes. And that is game and match and tournament and everything.
Congratulations, Flipstip and Norm616 winning 3-2 against Black Dutch and Skazi over the course of about two hours. Not including the break, by the way. Well done. And yeah, that's the thing. That's that's really performance. That's a huge amount of units. That's 20 by 20 map. Normally, 16 by 16 is the biggest that's played on, except things like Onyx Cauldron, which play more like a 12 by 12 despite their size. Yeah. That was a game. Actually, Protector was being built as well because, hey, they saw the nuke. Why not? Although, it wouldn't have been up in time. That's the thing to point out. And there was a lot of targets. But yeah, that's that's game. That's match. That's tournament. That's, like I said, they win. Well done. Congratulations to Flipstep and Norm616. You have won the October 2v2 tournament. And Skazi and Black Dutchie getting third. And Aquaman and Lowry, Anakin and Lowry getting second. And I think... Yeah, this is, in fact, a total flip. I mean, we're, there were some mentions earlier about the fact that, you know, in order, it's like Google Frog Yaknam, Anarchy the Lowry, Skazi Black Touchy flips up Norm. And that Anarchy the Lowry getting, I mean, he's being beaten by the lower players, total upset. And then Anarchy the Lowry being Google Frog Aquanim, also an upset. And then this is also an upset. The entire tournament, this is a tournament of upsets. I hope you're not upset. But that's how it goes. But anyway, that is going to be it. So yeah, thank you. Well done. I mean, well done to the top players in general. Like, well done, Flipstip, Norm, Skazi, Black Dutchie. Annika Lowry did well as well. Google for like Acronym. I'm actually a little surprised. Gotta be honest. They were doing pretty okay. But, I mean, Flipstip and Norm just knew what to hit. They knew where to hit that weak spot. Like, they knew what to stop, what to stab out. I think if Google Frog and Acronym played a little bit safer, it probably would have gone another way. But there were several opportunities, like in Bandit Plains, for example, where Google Frog went forward. Didn't play that safe. Really just kind of putting out there just a bit too much. And that, I think, caused the problem. But anyway, that is going to be it. That's that's the tournament. And I will have the cast on YouTube, assuming that OBS has no problem saving out eight hours or nine hours worth of recording at a time. I've only tested with seven. I think it'll work. I'm not totally sure. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Because I think I'll be able to save it out. And if I can, expect the on YouTube versions tomorrow-ish. Tomorrow afternoon-ish. I, I think that will be doable. That should be fine, yeah. So expect them tomorrow. I will get those up. And then they'll be on YouTube, which you can watch. Because this was really cool! This is one of the best performances during tournaments I have seen Ever. It's like the, well, not the last one we went tournament, but the one before was the best organized, the best run, most smooth tournament. But this was the best played tournament I can think of. I don't know if it's that tournament plays causing people to improve. I sure hope it is. Because this was awesome. This is so wonderful to see. So I hope you enjoyed that, and thank you all for watching. Have a good night, everyone.